Thousands of archaeological discoveries are made every day, but some of them catch the eye more than others. They have a certain je ne sais quoi that makes them stand out from the crowd. They can look like anything and come from any era, but they all have the wow factor. They're incredible archaeological discoveries, and we have plenty of them in this video. We begin with a chilling discovery that reads like a scene from a murder mystery novel. Archaeologists in Switzerland have unearthed the 400-year-old remains of a man buried face down with a knife and a bag of coins. The unusual burial was found in Schupfen, a town known to have been a burial ground in the Middle Ages. The man's skeleton was found a little away from the other burials, sparking intrigue among the researchers. The bag found under his chest contained 24 coins, all severely corroded and fused into a single block. Using powerful X-ray technology, the researchers were able to identify the coins, some of which were minted as recently as 1629, indicating the man was buried after that year. The coins were of small value, ruling out robbery as a motive if the man met his end through unnatural means. The strange burial position in the presence of the knife have led to various theories, including the possibility of a hurried burial due to an infectious disease or an assassination driven by revenge. The mystery of the face-down burial continues to baffle researchers, adding another intriguing chapter to the annals of recent archaeological discoveries. In the rugged landscape of eastern Armenia, the ancient population faced a unique architectural challenge. With no level ground on which to build, they turned to the sloping hillsides and created the remarkable cave dwellings of Old Konzaresk. This historic cave village, nestled on the steep slope of a gorge, is a fascinating network of natural and human-made caves. At its peak, the community was home to an estimated 15,000 people, with dwellings carved over and around each other, necessitating a complex system of ropes and ladders for access. The village even boasted two churches and three schools. Remarkably, these cave dwellings were inhabited until the 1950s when Soviet officials declared the caves unfit for living and evicted the remaining villagers. If it weren't for that, some of the last holdouts would probably still be living in the caves even now. Today, Old Nodzeresk is a testament to human ingenuity and resilience, with its caves now serving as grazing spots for local livestock. A 525-foot-long suspension bridge built in 2012 using local funds and labor connects Old Nordzerisk with the modern village of New Nordzerisk, symbolically linking Armenia's past with its present. Now we have some more rugged landscapes, but this time they're in southern Iceland, where a vast network of human-made Viking-era caves has been discovered, sparking intrigue and excitement among archaeologists. The caves found near the historic area of Odi are believed to date back to the 10th century. Odi was once a significant political seat, home to the powerful Advarhar clan, and one of the first places in the country to build a church after the arrival of Christianity in Iceland around 1000 AD. The caves, which are larger and older than initially thought, and so could be even older than a thousand years, have been a challenge to study due to their depth and the crumbling texture of the rock. Theories about their use range from livestock pens to mythological sites. The most famous member of the Advajar clan, Samander the Learned, was one of the earliest chroniclers of the history of Norwegian kings. His grandson, John Lofsen, was a patron of Snorri Sturluson, the legendary historian and poet who chronicled modern Norse mythology. The finding of these caves offers a fascinating insight into the technology and traditions of Viking-era Icelanders even if it still poses more questions than answers. In a fascinating archaeological discovery in Ljubljana, Slovenia, an extensive late Roman cemetery complex has been unearthed, revealing more than 350 skeletons and several sarcophagi. Located on today's Gospavetska Street, the site was outside the walls of the Roman Amona, but it held a special place for the population who lived there, the cemetery complex, which dates back to the middle of the 4th to the beginning of the 5th century CE, was a significant burial site. The discovery also includes the remains of a sacral building, which plays an important role in early Christian architecture. 
The construction of this complex began several decades after the Edict of Tolerance, by which time several Christian communities lived in Amona. The early Christian community of Amona became more active towards the end of the 4th century, when Christianity replaced other religions, leading to the establishment of more centers and churches. This is a discovery which provides a rich insight into the religious practices and burial rites of the late Roman period and further serves as a reminder of the extent of the Roman Empire and its reach across Europe. In the heart of the Tuscan countryside in Italy, a mysterious site known as Poggio Rota, often referred to as the Italian Stonehenge, has been capturing the attention of archaeologists and history enthusiasts alike for several years now. Discovered by researcher Giovanni Fio in 2004, this megalithic site is believed to date back to the culture of Renaldone, which thrived from 4000 to 2000 BCE. The site comprises 10 megaliths, each car from a single block of tuff, arranged in such a way that they functioned as solar pointers, marking the solstices and equinoxes. This celestial observatory, nestled on a small hill, was likely used to track and celebrate the changing seasons and the cycles of the sun. The site also offers panoramic views of the major peaks of ancient and modern Etruria, including Mount Amiata, which was likely revered due to its alignment with Thuban, the pole star during the 3rd millennium BCE. The discovery of Poggio Rota offers a fascinating glimpse into the spiritual and astronomical practices of prehistoric cultures underscoring the universal human fascination with the cosmos. As for why so many unconnected ancient people in so many different European nations erected stone circles at about the same time? Who knows? In Germany, an ancient column featuring images of Roman gods, including Jupiter, was discovered by archaeologists in 2020. The column was found in the town of Kirpen, near Cologne in a well at a lignite mine site. The column was damaged, with experts suggesting that it may have been thrown into the well deliberately sometime between the 2nd and 5th centuries, possibly by Christians seeking to destroy the remnants of the pagan gods. The artifact stands more than 16 feet tall and also bears images of the goddesses Juno, Minerva, and Nemesis Diana. The depiction of Nemesis Diana is rare, and it's unclear why she would be portrayed alongside the three main Roman deities. The well in which the column was found is believed to have been used between the 2nd and 5th centuries, hence the approximate dating for the column and its use for such a long time is regarded as extraordinary. The column may have stood in the periphery of a series such as wells that belonged to Roman farms or manors, and the discovery could offer insights into religious conditions in the Rhineland during the late Roman period. In a discovery that rewrites the history of international relations in the ancient world, archaeologists have found evidence that a Persian scholar was teaching mathematics in Japan over a millennium ago. The evidence, a piece of wood with carvings analyzed using infrared imaging technology, was found in Nara, the former capital of Japan. The carvings appear to name a Persian lecturer who worked at a facility where government ministers were trained. This is the first evidence suggesting that a Middle Eastern official may have been employed in Japan at that time. While previous discoveries have revealed direct trade links between Japan and Persia as early as 600 CE, this finding indicates that the ties between the countries were not merely economic, but also intellectual and cultural. It's an insight into the cosmopolitan nature of ancient Nara, where foreigners were treated equally. This finding is a testament to the global nature of knowledge exchange, even in the ancient world. It seems that if you had skills and were able to travel, there were places that were happy to accommodate you, even in Japan, which wasn't in short supply of intellectuals during this era. This has been a video full of revelations so far, and our next revelation rewrites the history of art. Scientists have discovered that the earliest oil paintings were created in Asia, not Europe. The evidence comes from caves behind the two colossal Buddha statues in Bamiyan, Afghanistan, which were tragically destroyed by the Taliban in 2001. The caves are adorned with paintings from the 5th to 9th centuries, 
and recent experiments have shown that these paintings were made with oil centuries before the technique was known in Europe. The murals depict scenes of Buddhas in vermilion robes sitting cross-legged amid palm leaves and mythical creatures. The researchers found that 12 out of the 50 caves were painted using oil painting techniques, possibly using walnut and poppy seed drying oils. Their existence challenges the widely held belief that oil painting started in the 15th century in Europe. The paintings are likely the work of artists who traveled the Silk Road, the ancient trade route between China and the West. However, who those artists were, where they came from, and where they went are things we'll most certainly never know. There's much we don't know about the ancient fascination with serpents, as evidenced by the fact that archaeologists have unearthed two stone snakeheads in Ukraine dating back to the Mesolithic period of the Middle Stone Age. These curiously shaped ophidian sculptured stones were found near the famous Kamyana Moila stone mound near the city of Terpenia. The older of the two figurines dated between 8300 BCE and 7500 BCE is a yellow sandstone snakehead with rhombic eyes and a wide long line representing a mouth. The younger stone, dated to about 7400 BCE, is smaller with a flattened round shape and deep scrapings for eyes. The people who crafted these sculptures were hunters and gatherers, but unfortunately much about their cultural traditions remains unknown. The existence of these serpent stones provides a glimpse into an ancient culture that held the snake in high self-esteem, a reverence that would later manifest in vast architectural structures stretching across their entire landscape such as the serpent or dragon walls. They're a reminder of the profound influence of the natural world on human culture and spirituality. In modern times, we're becoming increasingly accepting of the idea that Christopher Columbus wasn't the first European traveler to visit the North American continent. One key piece of evidence supporting the idea that Columbus didn't get there first is an ancient Roman sword from a shipwreck near Oak Island in Nova Scotia, Canada. If it is what it appears to be, it suggests that the Romans beat Columbus by approximately 1,000 years. The story behind the finding of the sword is a little shady. It's said that a father and son hauled the sword onto their fishing boat by accident after passing above the wreck several decades ago, but kept it hidden because they feared being prosecuted for disturbing the shipwreck. For that reason, they kept it as a family secret until late 2015. That led some people to suggest that the sword is a forgery, but scientists have confirmed two key facts. First, the sword is definitely an ancient Roman gladiatorial votive sword used for ceremonial purposes. Secondly, the shipwreck definitely exists, and the ship is consistent with the Roman design. It's possible that someone brought the sword to Canada many years later, but when you combine its authenticity with the shipwreck's existence, it'd be quite a coincidence. Many centuries ago, the Warangal district in Telangana, India was the capital city of the whole Kakatiya dynasty. Inside that district was a fort, built at least 800 years ago, known as the Warangal Fort. You can still see the ruins of the fort and its four beautiful gates today, leading to the ruins of what was once an enormous Shiva temple. The fort was attacked many times over the years, but remained standing thanks in no small part to its impressive fortifications, which include giant granite blocks fitted close together without the use of any mortar to join them. That method of construction is curious, but perhaps not as curious as the pillars of each gate, which are covered in carvings of lotus birds, mythical creatures, and strange birds, and yet don't bear any religious symbols. That's strange for the India of the time and might be the only reason why the gates weren't later destroyed by Muslim invaders. Who could destroy work of such beauty, though? Look at how perfect the carving and polishing of all the stones and columns are. Each brick and each detail has been cut to laser precision, but without using laser tools. In fact, according to what we know of the technology of the time, all this was made using very few tools at all. Almost every ancient civilization in the world eventually installed coinage as its preferred form of currency. But precisely when that happened varies drastically from culture to culture. 
In August 2021, archaeologists reported the discovery of the world's oldest known coin mint inside a foundry in Guangzhou, China. They believe the facility to be around 2,800 years old. To back up the idea of the discovery being a coin mint, they also found pieces of metal currency shaped like spades at the same site. The foundry itself might be one or two hundred years older, which suggests that it originally produced other metal goods before switching purposes and focusing on currency production. That would probably have made this a rich and prosperous area, but the good times didn't last forever. The site appears to have been abandoned around 2400 years ago after four centuries of use. The remains of old city walls and moats have been detected in the area around the foundry. Archaeologists think that this might have been an important regional center for the ancient Zheng state, but they haven't yet been able to confirm their suspicions. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.